Hey guys, this video is going to talk about the ACA ratio, the gradient method. It provides us with very useful information for diagnosis and management of binocular vision disorders. It can be difficult to get your head around at first, but if you break it down, it's quite easy to understand. We all know a normal ACA ratio is 4 to 1, but what does this really mean? So basically it's saying that for every diopter of accommodation, I need 4 diopters of convergence. Another way of saying this is how is my alignment or posture, so the convergence, going to change when my focusing power or accommodative demand changes? There is a number of ways to test ACA ratio. I'm going to talk about the one that I find the most simple using the Fourier card. So before we start, I want to clarify two terms. You've got accommodation and convergence. Accommodation is the focusing of the eye, so this is what allows us to see clearly. Then you have convergence, which is the posture and alignment. So where are the eyes sitting? Is it out? Is it in? This is what it allows us to see single and not double. So how do we test ACA? Basically, the patient needs to be wearing the full knee correction when we're testing at near in a trial frame. And then you're going to place a six base down prism in front of the right eye to dissociate the eyes. The patient should see two arrows and you need to ask the patient where the top arrow is pointing to, the blue or the yellow. This will provide us with our starting point and gives you the convergence before changing the accommodative demand. Let's go through an example. So say the patient said that they saw four yellow, so a four isophoria in this case, as their starting point. So next you're going to place plus one flippers in front of the patient and ask where the top arrow is pointing to. You also want to know if the patient can see clearly through the lenses. In this case, the patient responds with a one isophoria. Do the same thing, this time with minus one flippers in front of the patient because you will try to change the accommodative demand. Repeat the same thing with plus and minus two flippers. We're trying to see how changing the accommodative demand, the amount of focusing we have to do, and what impact that's going to have on our coordination, so where the eyes are sitting. So now we've got all this information, but what does it mean? So the pattern is, when we introduce plus lenses, it reduces the isophoria. This makes sense, because plus lenses are base in. So they reduce the amount of accommodation we have to do, they relax the eyes. So that means we're doing less convergence because they stimulate divergence. And when we introduce the minus lenses, the opposite applies. It increases the isophoria. So this time we've got base out lenses, which stimulates convergence. So now we're going to calculate the ratio. We want to know the ACA to minus. In this case, when we place the minus two flippers in front, the patient had a 20 isophoria. The original position of the patient was a 4 ESO, so 20 minus 4 divided by 2, because that's the two flippers that we're using, gives us an 8 to 1 ratio. We want to know the ACA to minus because the patient originally had an isophoria. We want to know when I increase the amount of focusing the patient has to do by introducing the minus 2 flippers, what is going to happen to the coordination system. This is telling me for every one diopter of accommodation, the patient is doing 8 prism diopters of convergence which is double the normal amount of 4 to 1. So this patient is turning their eyes in a lot more than necessary. We can help this patient by reducing the accommodative demand and hence reducing the amount of convergence they need to do. Looking at the results, we can see if we give this patient plus 1s, it's going to reduce their isophoria to one prism diopter. So the patient's going to benefit from having plus 1 readers. So this means if I have a high ACA ratio, we're doing a lot more convergence for every diopter of accommodation. So in this case, we're turning our eyes in too much, so the patient has an ESO. Whereas if I have a low ACA ratio, that means that we're not doing enough convergence for every diopter of accommodation. So in this case, our eyes aren't turning in enough, or they're out, so an EXO. In real life practice, I wouldn't sit there and calculate the ratio, but rather just do it logically. If I record an isophoria, I know that plus lenses are needed to reduce this. So I'll introduce plus until it goes close to ortho. If the patient says I have an exophoria, then the opposite applies. I'm going to introduce minus. Why is this? Well, think back to your basics. Plus lenses bring the light closer to the retina, decreasing the amount you need to accommodate or focus, whereas minus lenses push the light back and increase the amount that we have to focus. And just remember, just because you measure an ESO and exo doesn't mean you have to prescribe anything. The patient may be managing just fine because they have good reserves. So listen to the patient's symptoms. Are they getting eye strain, diplopia, headaches, etc.? If you listen to your patient, they'll pretty much tell you if management is needed or not. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and please be sure to check out my society six page FD designs, which has awesome optometry related and eye related merchandise 
I've popped the link in the description below, so check it out.